In this module, we will review probability concepts that will become useful in solving decision analysis problems. In particular, I would like you to focus on the following learning objective. First, what are the rules of probabilities in decision making? Second, how to develop probability as a measure of uncertainty? Third, utilize basic probability rules to compute probabilities. So let's start with what is probability. Probability provides a numerical measure of the likelihood of an outcome or an event occurring. Probability always lies between 0 and 1. The closer an event's probability is to 1, the more likely the event will occur. The closer an event probability is to 0, the less likely the event will occur. The concept of probability also ties to experiment. An experiment is a process that results in one of the number of possible outcomes. The sum of the probabilities for all possible outcomes is 1. For example, when we toss a fair coin, there are two possible outcomes in this experiment. There is a 50% chance to get a head and a 50% chance to get a tail. The sum of the probabilities for these two possible outcomes is 1, or 100%. The next question is, why do we use probability? We use probability because we want to weigh impacts of uncertainties in decision making. For example, should I bring an umbrella if the probability of running is 60%? Or for a business example, how should insurance company decide how much to charge for different type of insurance policies? The amount charged by a particular policy largely depends on the likelihood for the incidents that are covered by the policies. To understand how we assign probabilities, it is essential to know the definitions of the terms that are related to probability. Let's start with an experiment. An experiment is a process that will generate one of the number of possible outcomes. Each outcome in an experiment is a sample point. The collection of all possible outcomes, or sample points, forms the sample space. Here are some examples in this slide. In the experiment of rolling a die once, there are six possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, and six. These six outcomes form the sample space. The next definition I want to talk about is event. An event is a collection of sample points. We can calculate the probability of an event by adding the probabilities of sample points that are included in the event. Suppose event A is a scenario where we get an even number when we roll a fair die. Then event A contains 2, 4, and 6. In this example, the probability of getting each number is 1 over 6, and the probability of event A is 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, which adds up to 3 over 6, or 0.5. With the definition of experiment, sample points, sample space, and event in mind, the next thing I want to talk about is how to assign probabilities. There are three methods. The classical method assigns probabilities based on the assumption of equally likely outcome. The relative frequency method assigns probabilities based on historical data. The subjective method assigns probabilities based on personal judgment. Let's look at some examples and start with the classical method. If the experiment is rolling a six-side die, then the sample space contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. If we assume this is a fair die, and each outcome is equally likely, then we will assign 1 over 6 of chance to each sample point. In the next example, we utilize the relative frequency method. The relative frequency of an event can be viewed as the proportion of times that event happened in the past. 
The probability of an event can be calculated as the number of sample points in the event divided by the total number of sample points in the historical data. In this tool rental example, the company has 40 days data. Because 5 out of 40 days it rented zero publisher, the company will assign a probability of 5 over 40 for the event of renting zero publishers on an arbitrary day. Similarly, the probability of renting one publisher on an arbitrary day could be calculated as 15 over 40, which translates to 0 0.375. The next example is about using subjective method to assign probability. The subjective method allows a decision maker to express his or her belief in the likelihood for an outcome to occur. In this example, Tim and Judy just made an offer to purchase a house. There are two possible outcomes. Either their offer is accepted or rejected. Judy and Tim may have different degree of confidence that their offer will be accepted, and therefore, they may assign different probabilities to the two outcomes. Next, I would like you to try a few examples. In each example, read the problems first. Work out the details on your own before watching solution. In the problem, suppose each NM in the bag is equally likely to be picked. There is a total of 10 NMs. Because there are 5 green NMs, the probability of getting a green NM is 5 over 10, or 0.5. Using the same logic, the probability of getting a blue NM from a bag that contains 10 NMs is 3 out of 10, or 0.3. Similarly, when there are 10 mm in the bags, and 2 of them are red, the probability of getting a red mm is 2 out of 10, which is 20%. Now you try a second example. In this example, we utilize the basic concept of probability such that the sum of the probabilities for all sample points in an experiment is 1. Therefore, we know that the sum of the probabilities for all these possible outcomes should be 1. And then the probability of getting 3 calls can be calculated as 1 minus probability of getting 0 call minus the probability of getting 1 call minus the probability of getting 2 calls minus the probability of getting 4 calls. Then we will get the answer, which is 0.2. For the second question, we want to get the probability of getting at least one call during lunchtime. We know that we can get this probability by adding up all the probabilities of the sample points that are included in this event. So we will add up these four numbers. And then we will get the answer. which is 0.9. Next, we will see the takeaway of this learning module.